Huffman. That's John 15, 1. Uh, I'm reminded of many times, and I think about it a lot of times, where I go into places to clean it up or something like that, and I see lots of vines climbing in the trees and things, and they're not, they don't have very much on them. But I'm thinking of Jesus. When, a, when it's cultivated, our lives are cultivated, Jesus is one that produces from us a lot of good things from us, Lord. And uh, he is the, he's the, the one that uh, makes the true vine uh, produce a lot. Amen. Branch. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Jeremiah 23.5. I'm reminded of that story where Jesus said, I'm the vine, uh, vine and you're the branches. And I know the vine and the branch are, are connected. Uh, they better be, because if, if, I'm, if a branch is not connected, it dies. And it also reminds me of coals in a fire or wood in a fire. If you take a piece of wood out of the fire, it dies out. Yes. And so we've got to stay connected. Amen. Amen. Bridegroom. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore is fulfilled. John 3, 29. What this tells me is I'm one of the chosen, and when I get to heaven, I will praise him and glorify his name because he has chosen me to live with him and my joy is that I will be with God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Was that it? Oh, one more? Okay. One more. You got one too? Okay. Day spring. Through the tender mercy of our God whereby the day spring from on high hath visit, visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Jesus is the light of the world. And this time of the year, we need to light our candle and show him that we can be his light. One more? No, there's not two more. Three more. Okay, good, good, good. Shallow. A scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shallow come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Genesis 49.10. How do you really think about it? Because it's not some, a term we use much. But that was when Abraham spoke over his son and it says that that scepter will not depart from Judah. Jesus is the lawgiver, but he fulfilled the law and he made a way for us. And he is coming back. Yes, he is. And he is going to receive us unto himself. And I praise him for that. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. The Lion of the true Tribe of Judah is royalty. It's eternal spiritual royalty. And he prevails through the end and the, he'll bring about the culmination of all of the prophecy through Revelation. That's right. Amen. Amen. The Bright and Morning Star. 
I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus was a bright light that came to shine on the darkness of the world and the sin, but also the bright morning star to lead us in the right way. Amen. Amen. The image of the invisible God in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of his sin, of our sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every Christmas creature. Colossians 1, 14, 15. To me, it's having faith that he is real, even though I can't see him. I am. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. I am means to me that Jesus was around back then, he's around today, and he will be around forever. That's right. Amen. Son of man, for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Oh my, I, I just, when I think of how Jesus suffered and everything on that cross and did that for us, and we must, we must tell other people the plan of salvation so they don't have to go to the devil's hell. Uh, he is the Son of Man, Lord of Lords. carpenter. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and of Judah and Simon? And are not, this, not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Mark 6, 3. Um, people get so concerned about people getting offended. It's always they said this and they. And, and who are they? They're, this is the son of God. And being a carpenter, he was... Um, showing that you didn't have to be high and mighty to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. This means to me that because of what Jesus did, I can boldly go to the Father with my problems, with my, with whatever is on my heart. Amen. King of Israel, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Uh, what I think is this is uh, the very lack of faith uh, of the religious leaders at the time uh, that um, Jesus was the son of God. Um, so this is kind of a mockery here. And uh, uh, Jesus could have saved himself, uh, but he knew God's plan all along that Jesus knew his sacrifice uh, would open the, open the kingdom of heaven uh, to all the sinners. And uh, Jesus knew that was God's plan. Amen. That's right. Last one. The Christ. And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16, 16. And I thank our Father for giving us his Son, that by him... We live forever throughout all eternity with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Um, <clears throat> well, here, I tell you what, just hold on to it and just have a seat. How many have uh, ever read the book or saw the movie The Shack? A bunch of you have. You've. Um, I read the book years ago, and I didn't like it. 
Well, I, there was things I'm looking at it in a theological manner and way, and I, uh, you know, portraying God first of all as a woman, and then lastly as a man, and uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit and. I'd read the book. People rec told me, read the book, read the book. Oh, it's wonderful. It's good. So I did. It came out, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago. The, the book, Shack, The Shack. Well, this week, I watched the movie of it. And um, it hit me real hard. Real hard. There was points in that movie that I just sobbed yes. and cried. And part of it was naturally because it's been six months since my, my beautiful went into glory. And God gave me a, the gift of being able to see her twice before the throne of God, worshiping God. And I'm forever thanking Him of that. But in the midst of that, at the, towards the very end, when God is portrayed as a man, He said, now we've got to do something that's painful. Yes. And there was brought up to me during that, those scenes of Him having to forgive the man that murdered His little girl. Yeah. And one of you just spoke, Rick, that was you that spoke a few moments ago about what they did to Jesus. Would we take one of our children and hand it over to have that done to our very own child? Would we do that? No, we would want to substitute ourselves in the place of. We wouldn't want it to happen to our child. And there were things that were brought up to me in that time while crying and sobbing even. I had to forgive my dad of things. Had to forgive my mom of things that had been long, long, long suppressed or put down. Now I am firmly convinced that both my dad and my mom are in heaven. And not because of their righteous life. <laughs> no. None of us can say that. Amen. Not a single one of us. It's because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ right. that any of us makes it to heaven. Amen. You can say amen. amen. But I had to forgive and go through a whole list of people to forgive. Myself included. There's a little meme thing that uh, is like a photo that had been put on Facebook. And it was about people in the Bible. If I said the name Judas, you'd instantly think of the one who betrayed Jesus, wouldn't you? But you got to remember, Jesus had a brother that was named Judas. Yeah. Judas was a common name back in those days. And uh, Thomas was a common name and different, different ones. He had four brothers and sisters besides himself. Mary gave birth to a lot of kids, ladies and gentlemen. She was not a virgin, nor is she still a virgin today. Though I'm firmly convinced, naturally, she's in heaven. But she was an agent of God, used by God, just like Abraham was. And one of you spoke about the image, being the image of God. And I realized many, many years ago that God had created, had taken the very characteristics and, ast and attributes of Himself and split them in two and He put part of them in the man and part of them in the woman so that when a man and woman come together in holy matrimony and it's all by the blood, the man and of course the the. Uh, picture is the Jewish man who was circumcised on the eighth day after he was born and then the blood that spilt when the marriage is consummated and the man and woman come together in holy matrimony that they are married and sealed by blood. It's a blood covenant. When I said the word Judas, the name Judas, you instantly knew who he was. 
there's a list here. It says, uh, first one on the list was Jacob. Jacob was a Peter. Excuse me, I'm reading the second one. I can't, forgive my uh, cross-eyedness. <laughs> Jacob was a cheater. Peter had a temper. David had an affair. Noah was a drunk. Jonah ran from God. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Miriam was a gossiper. Martha was a worrier. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was moody. Mary Magdalene was a hooker. Moses stuttered. Zacchaeus was short. Abraham was old. And Lazarus was dead. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. A moment ago, one of you read about the chosen. And when you come up to the door of salvation, on that door is the word called. Are you called of God? Does God call people? Yes, He does. He calls you through your heart. Not with words of wisdom or anything like that, but He speaks to the very heart of who we are. And we know it's God that's speaking. And like God rebuked me this morning and spoke rough with me, oh yes, I knew He was talking to me, just like you're hearing my voice right now. All of us are called by God. Everybody is. The Bible says the word has gone forth to the entire world. Yes. And so when it's done that as a witness to the nations, then shall Christ come. Amen. And we're the terminal generation. And I relate to many of you in here. To Pastor Ricky, Brother James, Brother Wayne, different ones of you. I know where I should go when I die. But God called me. Yes. And I answered that call. And when you answer that call from God, and you go through that door, because Jesus is the door. He's the way, He's the truth, and He's the life. Amen? Amen. When you go through that door, and if you were to turn and look around back at the door, you would see the word on that door, chosen. Yes. See, it doesn't become chosen until you answer the call. Every one of these people down through the Bible answered the call. And when they answered that call, they became the chosen. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. And today I have a saying that I say. Now my family makes jokes about me because I go to cemeteries a lot. I remember people. And I go to hidden cemeteries if I find them. There's cemeteries hidden around all over the place. There's one right down here on Starrett Road at, at, in the Cape. Did you know there's a cemetery in the Cape? Yeah. I got a picture of every tombstone in it. I find cemeteries scattered all over the place. The lives of people and how they lived and how they were connected and what's going on. I look back at a life now, I'm, I'm going on 80 years old, and I see all the times where God intervened in my life and tried to call me, and I pulled away the shoulder. I wanted to do what Lyle wanted to do. And the, there came a day when I finally answered that call. Was I perfect when I answered that call? Not at all. 
still with many flaws and God's still working on me today. He had to rebuke me this morning because I finally was not going to come. And every way that I tried to get out of coming this morning because I felt terrible, He wouldn't let me. He intended for me to be here today. Yes, Lord, thank you. But I have a saying that I say, and I know it's true. It's true to me. No one has ever loved me like He loves me. Can you say it with me? No one has ever loved me like He loves me. And the second verse of that is that no one has ever cared for me like He cares for me. Would you say that with me? No one has ever cared for me like He cares for me. And then the third verse says, No one has ever done for me like He has done for me and is doing every day. Say it with me. No one has ever done for me and is doing for me every day. I, I messed it up. Sorry. Like He's doing for me every day. Yes. You get the idea. He is so interested in me, in you, in each one of you. Just like it was in that movie, The Shack. They did all those things. And see, we're not the judge, are we? That's, right. That's why God says we have to forgive. Yes. Because if we don't, then we're becoming the judge ourselves. And we, we are usurping then God's authority. And we're not God. He's God. Like I say, that movie hit me real, real hard in a lot of different ways. Some ways was conviction of flaws and failures in me and things that I'd held even with my own parents. Did my mama love me? Absolutely. Did she make bad mistakes raising me? Absolutely. I grew up hating my sister. I don't mean in a passing way. I mean hating her. See, parents never, never, never show partiality. Did you hear what I said? Yes. My mama was taught that you raise a boy one way, but you raise a girl a different way. And she did not realize that she was engendering hatred in me towards my sister. Through Jesus Christ, my sister and I became reconciled right outside where the old bathrooms were in the old building when she and John had started coming to church here. And through Jesus Christ, every one of those places in my life where there was anger and hurt and pain and rejection Jesus began a work of step by step by step by step of healing my heart, healing me. James a bit ago mentioned about him and Bert. Most of you may not know who Bert is. That was James's brother-in-law. And Bert was going to kill James. But through Jesus Christ, all of them, including Bert's dad, Vera's dad, their hearts were healed through repentance and forgiveness. And today, they minister. Does Bert still minister with you? Any? Still does. That's like James before he left up here. He's talking about leaving prison. He said, I wasn't never going back when he got out. But God had a plan. God had a plan. God's got a plan for you. Preacher Schifferdeck. <laughs> I'm playing with him. I'm playing with him. 
But, uh, but God does have a plan. And with your obedience and your surrender, God will bring it to pass. And it's not just for you. I have known many times after 40-something years now of ministry, where I may have been up here preaching and bringing a message that touched people's lives and brought them, and this happens all over the place. It's not just me as a preacher or Ricky or anyone else that stands up to preach the Word. That person may have had sin and unforgiveness and different things going on in their life, and they were not really qualified that particular day to get up and preach. Amen. But because of the need of the people, God worked, went right ahead and worked through that man who should have been put disqualified from standing up there. God used that man anyway and brought blessing and salvation and deliverance and liberty and freedom yes. to those in that congregation in spite of that man or if, or if it was a woman. And I learned this over the years how God is so wonderful and merciful and kind. Say kind. kind. God, God is a good God, ladies and gentlemen. He is kind and generous and loving. He loves you with a love that's you just have to learn it and experience it and enjoy it yourself by pressing into Him and finding out how much He actually loves you. God loves you. Amen. And I do too. I told Ricky and I've told others here this week, I said, I love our church. Some say, well, that's, it's your church. I said, no, it's not my church. It's his church. Amen. It's his church. And I love being a part of his church. Yes. And the miracle work that I see him do in people's lives. Is heaven knocking? <laughs> Could be. Heaven does knock, doesn't it? Knocks on our hearts all the time. Open the door and let me come in. That's what he says. Amen? Amen? Let's all stand. Reach over and take somebody's hand. I'm going to ask Pastor Ricky to dismiss us this morning. Our gracious God, we thank you for your word today. Father, we thank you that you just your Holy Spirit has opened our hearts. <laughs> Amen. Hug somebody's neck. Man, don't forget we need to set up the table. Amen. Then we're going to set up the tables and take you into the dining room.